Hi, my name is Jason Freeman. I'm professor and chair of the School of Music at Georgia Tech. And this is the first video in a series on learning sound synthesis with VCV Rack. In this video, we'll talk briefly about myself and about the Georgia Tech School of Music. We'll talk about the video series, what you should expect to learn, and whether this is the right fit for you. We'll talk about modular synthesis, the fundamental idea underlying VCV Rack. And then we'll get into the details of VCV Rack itself, how to install and configure it, how to use MIDI and audio with it, and how to use the default patch to make and change sound. As I said, I'm professor and chair of the Georgia Tech School of Music. I'm also a composer and computer musician, and I'm also a music technology researcher with a particular focus on education at the intersection of technology and music. I teach at Georgia Tech School of Music, where we have innovative bachelor's, master's, and PhD degrees in music technology that truly combine technology and music education. We also have a research center that supports groundbreaking research in music technology, including work in robotic musicianship, computational and cognitive musicology, brain music, and music informatics. We also provide music opportunities for all Georgia Tech students to learn about and perform music. You can learn more about the School of Music at our website, music.gatech.edu, and in another video in this series. This video series is based on some content that is part of a course that I teach to all of our bachelor's students in our music technology degree. You don't need any prerequisite knowledge to understand uh, and succeed with these videos. Uh, you don't need to know how to play a musical instrument or to read music, and you don't need to know how to program in a computer language or anything else like that. All you really need is some interest in the subject matter and access to a Mac, Windows, or Linux computer on which you can install the VCV Rack software. I also recommend that you use headphones or external speakers if possible, but your laptop speakers will do in a pinch. The learning goals for these videos are really that you understand the fundamentals of sound synthesis, things like oscillators, filters, envelopes, modulation, and sequencing. Uh, these are the building blocks of electronic music, not just in VCV Rack, but really in any music software or hardware that you may approach in the future. The nice thing about using modular synthesis, uh, such as VCV Rack, is that it really forces you to work at a very low level and understand the building blocks of how this all comes together, rather than just uh, relying on presets or sounds that other people have created. And so you'll be using modular synthesis in these videos to create new sounds and beats that are truly your own and are truly unique and unusual because you've started at this fundamental level of these building blocks of these modules. I should also explain a little bit about modular synthesis itself and how it works. It has a big importance in the history of electronic music and music technology, going back to the earliest synthesizers made by companies like Moog and Buchla. This picture on the top here is of an early Moog modular synthesizer, and you can see that it's comprised of different modules. Each module serves a very specific function, like generating a sine wave, or filtering a sound, or changing the amplitude or volume of sound, or adding a, a filter to it, or something like that, or generating noise. And each of these modules is independent from every other one. The only way that they interact with each other is when you actually take a physical patch cord and hook it up from one of the jacks in one of them to one of the jacks in the other to connect the signal flow together and really design your own synthesizer out of these modules. This is, gives you incredible freedom over how to customize your synthesizer, but it can also be a little bit overwhelming, especially uh, if you have a modular synth that may have dozens and dozens of these modules that you can potentially patch together. That's why synthesizers eventually became more constrained. We see down here the Mini Moog, another really popular synthesizer that Moog made, where there are no longer any uh, jacks to connect patch cords together because the signal path how the audio signal flows through, uh, through the synthesizer from one part to another is fixed. There's no way that you can change that. The components are all very similar to what you see above, but that extra degree of customization is not possible. This made it much easier to program and to use and made it much more popular too, uh, but it did constrain some of what you could do with it. 
This trend continued with the move into digital synthesizers and then into software synthesizers, where you often load presets uh, so that you're not only using kind of a signal path and design that someone else has made, but you're also using the sounds that they've designed with it. Uh, and aside from maybe tweaking a few knobs, you're not actually making that many decisions about the sound design. Uh, there's been a push against this, though, in the last 20 years, with the reemergence of modular synthesizers is a really important form of, of sound synthesis. That's particularly been true with the emergence of a standard called Eurorack, which lets you mix and match analog modules made by lots of different manufacturers and let them seamlessly work together in a rack. That can get very hard especially and very expensive to start procuring all these modules, though, uh, and figuring out how to use them together. That's where virtual modular software like VCV Rack becomes very attractive because you don't need to buy anything. You don't need to dedicate a lot of space to your rack. It's simply a software program that lives on your computer and you can choose from hundreds and hundreds of possible modules that you can download to the VCV Rack website and then assemble however you want. So it's a great way to learn about and start experimenting with modular synthesis without having to make the investment in hardware right away. So to get started with VCV Rack, First, you need to do download, install, and run it. And you can download it from vcvrack.com. And when you get there, the website will look like this. You can click on the download link, choose your platform, Mac, Windows, or Linux, and you're up and running. And once you do that and you open VCV Rack, it should look something like this with a default patch that opens with all these modules like what you see on the screen. Before we can start making sound, we need to configure a couple of quick things. How we get information into our synthesizer through MIDI and how we get sound out of our synthesizer through audio. Let's start with the audio. I'm going to pick my audio driver. On a Mac, that's Core Audio. On Windows or Linux, that's going to have a different name. And then I pick the audio device that I want to send sound out to. Um, here I'm picking one that goes with my screen recording software. Uh, this particular module supports up to eight channels of audio, but in most cases, we're just going to do stereo audio, one for our left channel and two for our right channel. So that gets audio out of our synthesizer, but how do we send messages into our synthesizer about what notes we want to play? For that, we use MIDI, which is a standard protocol used across a, a lot of music technology, software, and hardware. It stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Uh, and in this case, uh, I'm assuming that you don't necessarily have an external MIDI keyboard at home that you can hook up, though if you can, you're welcome to use that. Uh, but we're just going to use the computer keyboard as if it were a musical keyboard. So I'm going to pick my computer keyboard driver as opposed to some other driver that would help me connect to other MIDI devices. And my QWERTY keyboard is what I want to use. Uh, and then that is set up so that when I hit the keys on the keyboard, each one will trigger a different note. So Z would be a C, X would be... A D, C would be an E, and V would be an F, just going across the bottom row of my keyboard, like this. And you can experiment with this and pretty clearly figure out where the sharps and flats are and the different octaves are, and so on. Uh, so now we have this set up, and I can play... Uh, play notes, I can hear them, and I can also see the signals show up on this signal scope here. Uh, so let's go through a few basic things that I can do with these different modules to actually change what's happening with the sound. First of all, I can change the, over amp the overall amplitude or volume uh, through my mixer, and I can uh, reduce or increase the level by dragging this knob. If I want to go back to the default on any knob, I simply double click it. And if I want to be very precise about my setting, I can right click or control click it. And then I get a little pop up where I can type in a specific number that I want to set it to. Speaking of volume or amplitude, the ADSR module, that stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release, allows me to change the amplitude of different parts of my note as it fades in and fades out. For instance, if I change this attack portion, I can change how long it takes the note to fade in at the beginning when I press the note. I can have it fade in immediately to full volume, or I can have it take a really long time to fade in. Same thing with release. I can have it release immediately when I let go of the key on the keyboard. Or I can have it have a very slow and gradual fade out. Over here is my voltage controlled filter. And this lets me control the frequency content of my sound. And here we're going to move the frequency knob so that I can uh, allow uh, more or less of the higher frequency content into my sound. So I can cut that all off. 
So it sounds a little bit darker. I'm getting only my low frequency content or I can increase this. So I'm letting in a lot more of my high frequency content. You can hear that really clearly if I drag that back and forth during the note itself. And then finally over here, I have my VCO, my voltage controlled oscillator, which is generating my basic waveform. I can transpose that based on moving this frequency knob. And then I can also change the waveform type. Right here, it's set to a sawtooth wave, but I can drag that over to be a square wave or a triangle wave or a sine wave. So I'm changing the timbre of my sound by changing that waveform. So those are a few basic things that I can do with VCV Rack to make sound and to change basics of the timbre and the properties of the sound that I'm hearing. So in this first video, we learn the basics of what is modular synthesis and what is VCV Rack and how we make and change some sound with VCV Rack. In the next video, we'll get into much more detail about how each of those modules that you just saw works and how you can connect them together in different ways to make different kinds of sound.